Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Near Replicants. Last time we left off, we did a bunch of stuff in the B playthrough, accomplished a lot of things, and today we're probably, hopefully, going to do the same sort of stuff. So, something I want to do first is... There is a side quest that we can do that we've never done before. Um, well, there's this one, but there, I'm talking about a different one. Um, and I think I want to try and do that. The Magic Stone is supposed to be a quest that I can I do. You find your Yona. So I'm going to look around, see if I can figure out where that is. Maybe Devil will have it for me. I, I don't know. So, yeah. I say, each time we encounter that bickering couple anew, we are made to endure an even further torrent of meaningless and incessant chatter. This is new. Yeah, they love to talk, all right. Remind you of anyone? Grimoire Vice is 100 times that better. You don't see this old tome flitting about starting Donnybrooks and set tours now, do you? Alright, well that was new. Good on you, Vice, but we're here anyway, so I guess we can go ahead and start talking. So, yeah. We're gonna go check in with the Strange Thing store. Make sure I do this quest for this guy before he dies. Just started shading in the village today, people kept coming up to me and saying, Boy, we sure wish your brother was around. And I said, Me too. Nier could kick that shade's butt. Yeah, there's that quest that I'm not accepting, because that's the stupid flower one that I'm... I'm not doing. That's a lot of work. Hey, so we're looking for a red jewel. Long story, please don't ask. You happen to have one? Asayukeshi? Tara, uretoso. Aruta. Ura. This is less a jewel and more a simple rock. Osaki to aru laki. Ya saite za dasti. Kichi oite te chitaru. De azeru yori. Wait, really? Thanks. Oh, that it's probably not going to be what he wants, right? Let's head for back dude's house so we can give him his jewel. I imagine it would be quickest to make for seafront by way of the canal. Alright, well, looks like we gotta get back. So, I'll see you in Seafront. Uh, it's are to us for acquiring a red jewel. But is it truly alright to make a present of something we receive at no cost? I think it's the thought that counts here. And whose thoughtfulness are we speaking of? Might I remind you the giver of this present is not even here. There we go, more new stuff. It is neat how you get so much dialogue for doing the side quest. I just wish so much of them weren't so incredibly tedious and painful. Alright, so what's the resolution of this? Welcome to Seafront. I'll hurry and get the apples and flowers together. So let's say you just head on over to my place. See you soon. Alright. I guess I'm heading over to your place. Um, it's a journey this has been. Let us make for the couple's home at once. There's a quest to accept over here. This is one of those annoying ones where I didn't have everything. <gasps> it's you. Yeah. Oh, I'm. I. This. Yeah, the cargo. Sure. Ah, uh, I. Hey. Yep. So cargo. We never did find the last one. There's one in Nears Village. There's one there. I'm not sure where the last one would be. Northern Plains, maybe. Southern Plains. There's water there. I'm not I'm not positive, but let's go see what the dealio with this is. Oh, look who it is! <laughs> oh, I remember the two of you. And we most certainly recall you, madam. That lover's quarrel you had back then was the stuff of myth and legend. Oh hey! Welcome home, honey pants. Hey, Snookums. So, remember how I said I was going to make things up to you after that whole uh, wedding anniversary fiasco? Well, I tried and tried, but I just couldn't remember what I promised to get you all those years ago. But, I had these two gents help me out, and we put together a whole bunch of stuff we thought you might like. Handed over the red jewel. I'm glad you put so much thought into it, but these are all wrong. Very wrong. Even the apples? I thought you liked apples. What? 
when we went to all that trouble for nothing. Honey, the only thing I wanted was a nice home-cooked meal. Back when we were newlyweds, you promised to make me a big feast of all your tastiest dishes one day. Remember? Huh. Now that you mention it, work has been so crazy lately that I haven't done much cooking at all. Hmm. I know how hard you've been working your little tushy off for my sake, Muffin. So, here's your punishment. You're making dinner tonight. And you two are going to join us. Oh, no. Wait, us? You sure? Of course I'm sure. It's the least we could do after all the trouble this big lug of mine put you through. This is not going to go well. <laughs> all right. I'm at a dining table filled with apple-based cuisine, red roses, and a single crimson stone. Illuminated by candlelight, the married couple fills the room with joyous laughter. The scene fills me with an unfamiliar sense of calm. Just a happy family gathered around the table. It feels so very normal. I never thought I'd feel this way again. So I stuff my face with the great feast before me, hoping it helps to hide the tears welling in my eyes. Alright, I didn't expect that to be so real. So. What did you think of my love muffin's cooking? It was all delicious, ma'am. I can't thank you enough. And though it boggles my mind to say it, I greatly enjoyed the company and conversation. Yeah, I really didn't expect that to go that well. I thought there was gonna be a massive fight again or something. Sorry again for all the trouble, but I hope this lets you know how grateful I am. Oh. I know he can be a handful, but I hope you'll continue being friends with my husband. Oh, and we'd just love to have dinner with you again sometime. Would we ever? Things get pretty boring when it's just the two of us. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I boring you now? Oh, wait, no. That's not what I meant, obviously. We've been down this road and know where it leads, lad. Flee at once. We're out of here. Yeah, so uh, we're just gonna go. Thanks for dinner. God, 3,000 gold. <laughs> Why even bother giving me a reward? <laughs> Why give me anything at all? I suppose I can grab... Well, we can get the scattered cargo from over here when I actually go do that part of the uh, quest. Oh no, I can't use the boat because he's arguing with his stupid wife. Damn it. Whatever. We'll go the Southern Plains route. But, uh, yeah, now I think I'll, I'll maybe go check out the Forest of Myth to see if, um, that quest I was, I want to do is there. And, uh, then if that's not there, then we'll just go ahead and go talk to Popola. Uh, hi, big guy. What are you doing here? It's just a big shade popped out of here. I know we had to kill one of these for, like, uh... One of the quests, but I don't have that quest now. This guy's just kind of here. Well, he's dead now. Oh, we got Celezra. Cool. Kane is was trapped inside the body and freaking out. Bob, should I give you first? Apparently, the manor's butler has a unique shade he wants your advice on. Yeah, don't look at me. Huh, this is new. Manor's butler has a unique shade. I wrote down the client. Sure. Okay, so that's at Emile's house. Yeah, I haven't been back there in who knows how long. I, I never bother because I'm like, there's just no one that's going to give a quest there or anything. But, uh, apparently there is. Apparently there is. Apparently, what's it? What's his face? I forget. I forget what the name of Emil's butler was. We might as well do this. I don't think there's any special reward for it or anything, but we can take care of this, I suppose. It's right here. It probably won't take too long. It sounds like it's just a fight against a shade. Maybe it's even uh, pretty interesting. 
Here's hoping. Bunch of these guys hanging out here now. You know, some of that. Alright. What's up? Spencer Mansion. I don't even know where the character is going to be waiting for me. It just said they were in the manor, so I really hope they're in this first room, otherwise it's going to be obnoxious. Okay, cool. Master Emil, terribly sorry to disturb you, but I fear we have a situation. What is it, Sebastian? I was attempting to tidy up the study earlier, only to find that it has been occupied by a shade. Shades really seem to love this place, huh? I take it you want us to kill the thing? That may not be necessary, sir. It's not causing any trouble. It is simply sitting in the study. It didn't attack you? It did not, sir. Well, I don't care if it's wearing a tuxedo and drinking a cocktail. If it's a shade, I'm gonna kill it. Okay, Nier. Cool it. Oh yeah, God, I forgot the worst part about this place is you're so slow. You walk so slowly. Oh, God. Alright, well, let's mosey on down. Alright, well, here we are. <clears throat> this must be the friendly shade. Still, a shade is a shade. Let's get rid of it. Who told you you could live in my home? I'll crush you like a bug. Please be careful. <laughs> this is a rather tough nut to crack. Oh, I'll crack it one way or the other. Wow, you guys really like murdering shades, huh? It is actually very tanky, though. I will, I will give them that. They were correct about that. Maybe this one's, like, unkillable, so they're, we're gonna give up eventually. Is it just running? Yeah, it's not fighting back. It's just running away. Wow, we're horrible people. I have to kill that shade. Do we? Ugh. Well, it's dead now, for real. And we got a recovery potion. Oh, please tell me you teleported me back to Sebastian. That would be fantastic. Yes. We killed that shade in the study. It was pretty tough. Excellently done, sir. And now I must insist that you take this payment. Alright, well, that was, uh, interesting. I thought there was gonna be more story stuff about it. But we mostly just got, you know, reinforced the fact that, uh, our party really hates shades. Especially near. What was the shade doing in there in the first place? Oh, here we go. I wondered that myself. Surely that creature lacks the intelligence to read books, yet I cannot imagine what else it hoped to accomplish there. Well, yep. <laughs> The shades are smart enough. They are sapient. You're basically killing humans. You're honestly, I, I don't know, man. You're making some big mistakes here. Hmm. Which job should I give you first? That butler from the manor. I okay, so the butler from the manor has another quest. Sebastian has another one. But I'm not walking all the way back out there. Screw that. We're we're doing this. I walked all the way back over here, and it's like you got a new quest from the butler. I wish when I finished the first one, he was just like, "Hey, I got another quest for you." But oh well. We'll uh, maybe do it later or something. But for right now, story. I know I wanted to do that stone quest. I was I was kind of just accepting all the quests that Devla gave me that I knew I could do. Um, and the stone quest hasn't shown up yet, because I think it's in the Forest of Myths, but I'm not sure, and I don't want to walk all the way out there just to have it not be there, so I'm trying to wait for Devola to give it to me. Aren't you glad to be going back home, Kaine? Home? The place is a shithole. Ooh, the village. It's home to so many terrible little memories, isn't it, Kaine? <laughs> Shut up, shut up, shut up! Yep. Okay, so we had we had Tyron pop in there. 
So yeah, we're going to the area now. That's basically what Popolo wanted to talk about. She's like, I got a letter from the, 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 the mayor of the area, and you should go over there and everything. So we let's do, do just that. Desire. We do not desire needless conflict. If we can continue to live with humans, then we can continue to live peacefully. But that young man will come. Yes, the young man will come. He will kill us all. Women and children included. What should we do? What can we do? Okay, so the shades were just shades that wanted to chill and fit in with people, but... Begs the question, why did I get a letter from... I can only assume one of them, because the mayor says he doesn't remember sending a letter, right? Why did they invite me here, basically? Did they just want to kill me? They knew they couldn't win, so... I'm not totally sure what's going on there. But we gotta go see the mayor. Is there an eagle egg up there? Ooh, it might be an eagle egg. It might just be. Alright, let's go ahead and get up there. But yeah, that makes me wonder. If they didn't want conflict with me... They said the old- the boy- the boy will come, but they're the ones that sent a letter to me, right? That's what I assumed this entire time. I, I thought the Shades were the ones that sent the letter because the mayor has no recollection of a letter. At all. So, I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's see if he's like, oh yeah, letter. Pretty sure he didn't re recall sending one though. Uh, hello? It's all. We came to ask a pardon. Yes, yes, Sheriff. You're the one who wrote the letter, right? Uh, hell is good. It may be faster. Let us out. Yeah, see, he said he didn't know anything about a letter. Alright, well, I know where to inquire. It's down there by, uh, all of you guys. Doing shop. And I think the funny thing is, is that... I remember being like, wow, you guys are disguised. But no, they're just, they're just trying... I mean, they are, they are showing up as humans, but... They're just trying to chill. They're just like, yeah, no, you can come to our shop and everything. But then we find out what they are, and we're like, murder. A letter? Yeah. I wonder who it is that sent the letter, then. That's curious. Curious, curious. I don't think there's anything I can buy here that I need, so... A letter, huh? Yeah, I think I heard something about that. So, you know about the letter? Hmm, maybe I don't. I'm not sure. Which is it, man? Oh, uh, and if I may ask, are you friends of Kaine? You could say that. Ah, I've heard the rumors. Here to hunt shades, are you? Indeed. Our aim is to defeat every last one. Every. Every last one? Everyone. 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 Vice! Beware, this man is a shade. Dead. It's a trap! I figured as much. Okay, well that's interesting. So I'm guessing You guys sure are taking your goddamn time. A thousand apologies. We were distracted by the local welcoming party. Want some help? A carnival of murder? I love it! Yeah! <laughs> The villagers are possessed! But not all of them. Some are still human, so be careful! Get out of here! No way! I'm not gonna abandon my own sister! Connie, what's going on? Don't be fooled by this lady. She's a shade! one of them now. I don't care what she is. She's my sister, and I love her. Mm-hmm. 
Why have you done this? We just wanted to live our lives in peace. Otsar. Stop it! Don't hurt my sister! You monster, you possessed monster. It is you who have lost your humanity. You are the true monsters. What madness. These people are behaving as if we are the villains. You are the cursed ones. You are the ones who should die. Find him! Kill them! Kill them now! No! You've got to stop this! We're trying to save you from the shades! Flint! Villagers are under attack over there. God, they dropped a lot of shit right here. What is that? Twisted ring. Cool. Why did you even come here? Huh. So I'm guessing what's happening here is the reason some of the some of the villagers are acting weird is because the shades have actually possessed the replicants and that's why they're acting that way. And that may be why that hurts. What are you doing? That may be why we got a letter from the mayor. But the mayor doesn't remember. But once again, why would the shades send us a letter to get us to come here? Go away, please. You guys are super stupidly easy to kill now. Go away. I can't deal with this. Just leave me alone. Ow. Listen here, you big jerk. Throwing your stupid wind at me. Out of here. Put down that weapon, please. I beg of you. There. Dead. All right, now we just got to do the boss fight over again, right? Which should have a lot of changes. Beast of shade as well. That thing sucked up the villagers. No! If we keep this up, we're gonna kill them all! We can't let that happen! Our village, our world, where am I? Who am I? Okay. Okay, eyeball monster. Something from within the creature. All right. This is just an attack. I gotta dodge, right? Is this the combined power of all of shades? It will take more than a barrage of magic to stop us. The first to waver is the first to die. Okay, that's not actually hurting it. I shouldn't do that. I sense magic coming from the center of that eye. No shit. <laughs> Are you sure, Vice? It just it just hit me with like a shit ton of magic. I know he's talking about something else, but it's funny to talk shit to him. Wait! I think those are actual people! Hold nothing back. Those are shades! I think Emil's right. I think there's not a difference between shades and people. Surrounding tentacles appear to deflect magic. There we go. We're making good now, progress now, though. Focus your magic on the beast center. There we go. Mir loves using just the big fist, or two big fists. Big damage. Look out! Something's coming! 
Okay. I forget how that targets. Oh yeah, it just tracks. Try yeah. attacking it from above. Will do. I'll try to pin it down. Emil. Emil pins it down. We got to go up here and attack it from the Emil. back. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it busy. You should be able to attack from behind. Go around and get it. Please hurry. Emil can handle this. We must circle behind the creature at once. Already way ahead of you. Just look. We're up here. Strike it in the eye. Not doing a lot of damage, though, is the only problem. I'm not sure why, though. It's like my bullets are missing. Okay, let's just do this then. Oh, I don't think they can reach. I think that's the problem. It is escaping to the inner level. I'm going. Damn it. Gotta catch my breath. Careful, Emil. Won't help anyone if we lose you here. There we go. Let's do my nice little shortcut to get down here faster. And Damn what's up? It. Beat the hell out of that thing. How can it still move? Its combined powers are beyond even my greatest suspicion. Tentacles, could you go away, please? There we go. It's almost done. Help me take it out! I'm on it. And a blue blue blue. Dead. Oh yeah, the giant spear. I like the idea of combining them all into one giant one, it's cool. Body 99.99% likely that of a red eye. Death of red eye confirmed. 13th experiment, force. Okay. Something about red eyes. I don't remember what the deal with that is. Emil. Emil, wait. Emil! He's gone. His instincts have taken hold. The ultimate weapon is being deployed. Ah, oh, fuck. This ain't good, sunshine. Poor Emil. Round two. He's gonna have to go through a round three as well because we got a third playthrough to do. Uncontrollable magic. I have to protect the people I love. That was my only thought as I unleashed a magic powerful enough to destroy not only the Shade, but everyone else as well. All of them. So many innocent lives. Destroy. Eviscerate. Crush. Kill. These are the dark impulses that overwrite all of their thoughts. All other thoughts, jeez, I don't know why my, my brain couldn't form words there. As a being that was created to be a magical weapon, these are my instincts. Or maybe it's better to call them our instincts. Emile's dream, Rampage. A klaxon sounds 
from deep within the bowels of the laboratory. Thick metal shutters drop down, sealing off the room with a series of dull metal thuds. Abort the experiment. Number six is out of control. Everyone get out of here now. Get out of- The researcher's words are abruptly cut off as a massive hand materializes out of the gloom and lifts him high into the air. The researcher begins to scream. He screams and screams, the sounds echoing off the walls of the laboratory, until the hand squeezes down, coating the room in a deep crimson hue. The rest of us... The rest of his colleagues stand in silence, mouths open, unable to process what they have just seen. Then a female scientist takes a step back and lets fly with a heartbreaking wail. But this is a terrible mistake, for the sound of her cries suddenly brings forth a monster in all its terrible glory. Its body is a bloated corpse, its head a grinning skull. And it is massive, many times the size of a human. The head lolls from side to side as it tromps about the room on all fours, bringing to mind the wild maneuverings of some wretched, starving beast. This creature, this thing, is experimental weapon number six, also known as Halua. No, oh no, please stop. Oh god, save me, save me! I don't want to die. One by one, the maddened cries of the researchers are silenced. Number six understands their petitions, it pays them no heed, instead continuing its rampage of destruction and slaughter with a focus that borders on obsession. After an eternity, the screaming stops. The alarms fall silent. And only then does the creature make a sound, howling out with an unfathomable roar that echoes up and down the empty halls of the blood-soaked laboratory. It's a sound that curses those who had dared bring such an evil into the world. And yet one that also seems to be pleading for help. Two sets of footsteps echo in an otherwise silent corridor in the first level of the laboratory. One set belongs to a young boy, his eyes blindfolded and his hands restrained. The other belongs to a severe man in a long white coat. The man drags the boy along by means of a long chain attached to a set of shackles on his wrists. Rubble is scattered here and there across the floor of the corridor, making the journey an exceedingly difficult one for a boy who cannot see. Um, excuse me? Could you please walk a bit slower, sir? I'm not used to being blindfolded and... Rather than stopping, the man only increases his pace, causing the boy to stumble in an attempt to keep up. The last humiliation proves too much, and the boy finds himself unable to arrest his fall. Without the ability to brace himself, he topples to the floor, smashing his head on a pile of debris and causing a trickle of blood to worm its way down his pale, frightened face. Agonized by the pain, the boy inadvertently opens his eyes, causing the falling drops of blood to emit a strange crackling sound before transforming into tiny white rocks. Close your damn eyes, roars the man. Y yes sir, stammers the boy as he slams his lids shut. He hadn't realized the blindfold had slipped off during the fall, but now he keeps his eyes squeezed shut so tightly that sparkles appear against the black of his vision. The boy is a meal, also known as number seven. He's a magical weapon whose eyes are capable of turning to stone anything that falls under their gaze. Don't look at me, barks the man. Never look at me. I'm sorry, sir. I'm looking at the ground now, so if you just hand me the blank... Instead of waiting for him to finish, the man extends one foot and presses Emil's face to the floor with a heavy black boot. So, sir stop. You're hurting me. I told you to keep your eyes and your mouth shut, so do it. The man knows this boy, this weapon, could wipe him out with a single glance, and yet subduing him in this way gives him a sense of relief. After making this certain the boy is significantly, sufficiently cowled, the man leans down, retrieves the blindfold, and knots it tightly around the boy's quivering head. Right then, on your feet, let's move. Emil staggers to his feet, trying to ignore the red liquid oozing down his face. The blood doesn't matter, the pain doesn't matter, all that matters is finishing the job they had set out for him to do. The second level of the laboratory is in even worse shape than the first. The environs are littered with rubble and rock, making the thought of a decent foothold laughable. When the man's eyes linger on a section of rubble stained a deep red, he has a sudden image of warm, gooey brownies slathered in a strawberry sauce. His stomach lurches at the thought, but when he attempts to avert his eyes, they land on the remains of a human being being rendered into what could only be described as paste. The man blinks, his mind going, goes strangely blank before attempting to determine exactly how many humans had to be sacrificed to create the scattered piles of flesh around him. After a moment, his thoughts simply cease altogether, as if his mind realizes that trying to put such a thing into form is folly. 
You, you can go to the, the rest of the way on your own, says the man in a voice much weaker than he wishes it to be. Yeah, so weak I thought it was a meal, in fact. I mean, what does it matter? You're not even human, you're a monster. With this, the man spins around and dashes back down the hall. The helpless Emil simply listens as the footsteps of his erstwhile captor fade into the distance. Emil finds himself alone in a room with the stench of death and blood. For a moment he considers opening his eyes, but the thought of the horrors that await him quickly squash this plan. Instead, he stands still and listens intently. Eventually, a far-off sound reaches his ears. That's the howl I heard before. Emil resumes walking, using the sound of the distant voice to guide him. Almost as if it was calling him home. By the time Emil reaches the third level, he is moving on memory as much as sound. His hand and face are covered in fresh wounds from numerous falls, but every time he thinks about giving up, his mind returns to... his sister. We studied together. We ate cookies together. We cried together. We laughed together. And sometimes I was the only one who got yelled at. That's why I was never lonely. Our being together allowed me to stay strong. For Emil, his sister was all he had to live for. So holding that feeling close to his chest, he presses on, one slow step after the other. Finally, Emil finds himself drawing close to a certain experimental chamber in the deepest part of the laboratory. The howl is very close now, and as he touches the switch that controls the door, he thinks about his mission. Number six is the ultimate weapon. She is his sister, and he must turn her to stone. The door slowly opens, revealing the massive interior of the experimentation chamber. After a few steps, Emil removes his blindfold and slowly opens his eyes. His sister lurks before him, but she looks nothing like the girl he once knew. Instead, he sees a savage beast crawling on all floors, all, on all fours through the shredded remains of researchers. As the thing that had been his sister stops and tilts its head in Emil's direction, he focuses his gaze on it. A series of soft crunching sounds emerge from the creature as his magic does its terrible work. First the fingers, then the hands, arms, legs, head. What little color the beast once possessed fades to a dull ashen gray. And yet somehow, it summons what strength remains and pulls itself toward Emil one slow, lumbering effort at a time. Wailing, the massive monstrosity closes in. Is she worried about me? Or is she coming to kill me? Emil feels prepared to accept either outcome. After all, this was his older sister, the person he loved more than anyone in the world. Halawa, I... The moment Emil speaks, number six comes to a sudden halt. Silence descends on the chamber as the siblings stare at each other. I'm sorry, Halua, but everyone says you're too powerful. They say it's too dangerous unless I seal you away. I'm so sorry. As Emil watches her body begin to turn to stone once more, number six simply waits in utter perfect silence. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, there's Emil's backstory. The moment number six petrification is complete, her memories flood into Emil's mind. The two of them huddling together in the cold. All alone in the world with no one to protect them. All she wanted was to save her little brother. And yet it was that little brother who in a sense saved her. The moment the petrification is complete, Emil sinks to his knees. A frozen sister and a little brother racked with sin. Alone in this cold cage, the two of them weep in a single, silent voice. Yeah, Emil's is, uh, basically just as depressing as Kaine's. It was our combined power that destroyed the Airy. Whole existences, entire lives, even their memories. We took it all. We took everything. My sweet, gentle sis sister turned into a monster. And the same thing will happen to me now that I have her power. If my instincts as a weapon win out and destroy me in the process, if that power ends up hurting someone I love, I...
but... But I... It's all right. <laughs> Wow, this ragtag group been through some shit. Here it is, the sacrifice key fragment. <laughs> oh boy. We had best be off. Yeah. That's a way to put it. Alright. So with that, we have yet another key fragment. And we have two parts of the main story left to go. We got to go deal with the Cerberus key fragment, and uh, we also have to do the mermaid stuff, I believe. Um, I think we have to do that again, at least. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you back at Popola and see what she says. Hey, Popola. Ah. Have you learned anything? I'm sorry. Well? Oh, how about this? Okay. You know the fair well, so yeah, it is the thing with, uh... The, uh, ferryman. So we do gotta go do the mermaid stuff. So, uh, yeah, I guess let's go take care of that. I don't think I've ever seen fog this thick before. Huh? What's that? Alright, so we get a bit more context for this this time. Alright. Well, we gotta talk to red bag guys, yeah. Oh god, it's over. What's wrong? Oh hey, I remember you! Seeing as we've come- I had a f- mm. but I was- That's- Alright. Alright, we can go ahead and accept this, I guess. Again. Hey, yeah, listen, anybody. I'll do- Yep, there's the... we need the cutting from the, uh, the tree. Never did turn that in last time. I got the cutting this time, but I never turned it in. Yeah. I think- Thanks. I realized that. It's, yeah. It's just, God. There's just, there's just so much. And like, uh... A lot of the side quests just aren't, like, super interesting? Like, I want to do them for the story, but the actual process of having to go through it is like, ugh. Hard to believe a ship of this size managed to run aground. Hmm, what was that? Hey, is someone there? Okay, I definitely heard someone cough just now. Maybe it's one of those kids from town? But where are they? Alright, so we're just gonna get more and more context. Oh, there's more. There you are. What are you doing here, kid? And who are you, anyway? Were you a passenger on this ship, maybe? <laughs> hey, it's okay. You don't need to be scared. Uh, 
Okay. So a little bit more context for what's going on here. So he went he went to go help her. And everything. To think that couple's petty squabbles have become something of an attraction for the locals. It doesn't surprise me in the least. Seeing people like that puts a little spring in your step, you know? You humans truly are a maddening bunch. Such buffoonery does little more than wear this old tome out. So wait, why why does it say go back to the southern plains? What? Talk to the brother. Oh yeah, because we gotta yeah, we gotta go back to Nier's village and talk to the brother. So many steps. feeling well your cough seems better at least check it out I brought you some bread today <laughs> oh easy there jeez you must have been starving well, look, no one's gonna take this from you, so just take it easy so you don't choke on it, okay? So, what were you doing on this boat, kid? Actually, scratch that. First things first. I can't just keep calling you kid. You got a name? Well, this is going nowhere fast. Let's see. Hmm. Louise. Yeah, what about Louise? I mean, it just sort of popped into my head, but what do you think? <laughs> Guess you're okay with it. Well, it's nice to meet you, Louise. Man, this is gonna get even more sad <laughs> at the end where he's like, Oh, I, uh, you're you're no daughter of mine. I hate you. You're a monster. It's gonna get real depressing real quick. Search the southern. All right, more new stuff. I just I talked to the brother, and now I'm back in Seafront. Hey there, Louise. Say, where'd you get that red bag? Oh no. Found it on the ship, did you? <laughs> you kids are so darn curious about everything. Anywho, it's good to see you. Afraid I don't have any bread today, but I did bring you something. Here, it's a ribbon. Let me tie it in your hair for you. Well, what do you think? Pretty nice, huh? Huh, what's that on the floor? Oh, it's a mirror. Well, that's a stroke of luck. Let's go ahead and check out your new look. If you go over there where it's brighter, you'll be able to see yourself more clearly. Uh, what's wrong? Don't you want to see? Oh, I see. You don't like sunlight. Guess your eyes are pretty sensitive after spending all this time in the dark, huh? Well, it's not like we can have you stay here forever. We should work on getting you out of here so you and me can go look at the sea together. How's that sound? Yeah, she doesn't like the sunlight because she's a shade, my friend. Last night, Nier told me stories until I fell asleep. I don't remember anything he said, but boy was I happy. Doll. Alright, let's go get over there at the ship. I think now we should... Oh wait, no, now we gotta go check in with the postman. There's so many steps to this. Now I know why, they gotta give enough time to get all those cutscenes in. That's why you gotta run back and forth and talk to people and hey, everything. Oh, sorry. You're not him. I'm sh I just Danny. I'm still, I Danny. Uh, actually, not a. All right. So, done with that. 
Uh, or wait, did I have to check the back room, or do I just go straight to the ship? I don't remember. It, since we're getting a loading screen, I think we're getting a new cutscene. Yeah. Hey, Louise. I brought your food for today. What's wrong? Aren't you hungry? Huh. You haven't been eating much lately. Are you okay? <laughs> well then, let's try this. Yeah, sorry about that. It's called a song. Humming a jaunty tune is the best thing for putting a spring in your step. Songs are like a little bit of wisdom that makes the tough times easier. I love them personally. I mean, not that I'm any good at singing. Whoa, your voice is a bit rough there. Wait, that was your voice when you were singing? It sounded like you were playing like an accordion, man. What's wrong with your voice? But you're actually pretty good. Huh. You know, I knew someone who lived in the town lighthouse before she died. She used to hum this same song a lot. I heard it every time I stopped by to deliver something, and I guess it just kind of stuck. Of course, that was quite a while ago. <laughs> Hey, are... are you trying to cheer me up? <laughs> you are a kind soul, Louise. Okay. Got the lighthouse lady being mentioned some more now. That's interesting. And boy, we're getting a, we're getting a, we're getting a lot of setup for this to inevitably come crashing down. Oh, hey. I'm sensing some really weird magic going on here, sunshine. You feeling it too? Yeah. Is it a shade? <laughs> Are you actually trying to think something through rather than just jumping in and killing? What's wrong, Kaine? Nothing. It's just I'm sensing a presence from seafront. Something like a shade. A shade in the town? That's not good. So that's why they just randomly showed up in town in our other playthrough. Yeah. And Kaine knew exactly what it was going in. So that's also interesting. Hmm. Well, let's go over there. I suppose we might as well investigate, seeing as how we lack any other tenable leads. Right. Let's head for the inlet. Kaine. Emil. What's going on? I'm sorry, for kind of strange. May what an inc What is it? Nothing. Okay, yeah, there was no new stuff from Tyron there, so. Just kind of skipped all of that. Yeah, we get it. It's a boat. Let me get on it. There's also that piece of cargo I can pick up over there just in case I uh, ever finish this uh, cargo quest. We're going to, be... to figure out some way to get inside that thing. This ship is in a state of want and decay. Surely we can find a hole or some such if we put... Hey, this is... Pick it up without looking Get inside. The there we go. Choice. Rifling these we can probably work. Let's go. Alright, now we just gotta progress to this little dungeon, which will be much faster if uh you know, I just take the critical path instead of trying to explore everything, so it shouldn't be too bad. So, were you able to write that letter? You know, now that I've taught you how. Not yet, huh? Well, there's certainly no reason to rush. 
You know, it makes me happy that you've taken such a shine to me. First time we met, I didn't have the foggiest idea what was going on in that head of yours. So, hey, I've been thinking. <laughs> How about you come live with me? It might be kind of nice to have a daughter around. Not into it, huh? Guess I should have figured. I'm sad to hear it, but it's your choice, of course. Huh? The floor's wet. Wait, is this... blood? Oh dear, are you... Oh, that's why you thought she was having her period, because the blood from where she kills people. Oh boy. Oh baby, that is one hell of a smell. We got something real nasty nearby, eh, Sunshine? <sighs> Come on, don't tell me you ain't picked up on it yet. You of all people gotta know what this smell means. This ship is in poor condition indeed. Whatever. <laughs> you sure you're all right? You really shouldn't push yourself. Hey, I've got an idea. Sure. Sounds good. Emil is on the case. I was gonna say, why is Kaine just this letting... This is pretty gloomy. I'm having a hard time imagining any townsfolk hanging around here. Well, as we've no other leads, let the search begin. All right, well, I, I'm just... I'm just gonna cut to when I get over there, when we get a new cutscene. The white trap. Wait. Okay, well, that's new context. We heard this before, and I was like, what is that weird accordion music? That was her singing. Which is weird to me. Yeah, because the voice is coming through there, but it sounded like a weird accordion, man. It doesn't sound like a voice at all. Be wise. New cutscene. Okay. Why did things turn out like this? Did he leave because of this body? I just want to be able to talk with him. I don't want him to be afraid of me. I don't want him to hate me. I want to maintain a human form. I want to look at the sun with my own eyes. I want to sing beautiful songs. Oh, this sucks. So if I can just eat more people, maybe then I can become a human. Oh, no. So you're eating people so that you can become human, so that you can live with that dude and finally get to be a kid, like you should have been able to. Hey there, you two. Hey. Did we? But then. Yeah. A little, yeah. Good. Jeez, you. S Tell me, come. It's on the floor. Of I feared. All right. So nothing really new from Kaine there. So let's just. <laughs> oh man, that smell is getting ripe. How you feeling there, sunshine? Not great. Can't you tell? Alright. Here we go. This was a pretty long boss fight, if I recall correctly, this so... This be the final... the culprit. Yep, let's go inside. Yeah, this was a pretty long boss fight, so this will probably take a hot minute once we get in here. Interested to see what new stuff we'll get. It's that girl we saw when we first entered the ship. Old lad, this is alone. There. Oh man, this shade is nuts. I think I'm in love. You can feel her power hanging in the air, and she ain't even trying yet. <laughs> Things are finally heating up. Huh? Could this girl be the presence you sensed, Kaine? Oh, hey, it's you. Been a while. Wait, you're the postman. Oh, I've been coming here a lot lately. I think this girl was on the ship when it drifted in. I've been keeping an eye on her until she's well enough to leave. Hey, so this is kind of awkward, but... The girl is, you know, bleeding? I brought a bunch of bandages with me, but... Uh, well, how exactly does one deal with a woman's time of the month? S sorry, sorry. Clearly crossed a line there. Forget I said anything. S 
Stay the hell away from her. She isn't. No, wait. Oh. She's scared of us, but worried about him. Kaina, Camille, we'll figure something out. You just find a way to get the hell out of here. The two of them will be fine. All right, so we got to get back. Yeah, we got to get out. The ship is collapsing. Very much aware. Of them. Yeah. They're in the way. Little hand, it's little Looks tentacle like hand came out. This little tentacle hand came out and shot at me. <laughs> That's funny. Boom, 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 boom. All right, we're here, everyone. Ooh, boxes. Thank you. Glad you two made it out in one piece. Yeah, we're good. But we'd better go help him out. No shade would dare. We should use the. No shade would dare pursue us. <laughs> what on earth? Generative abilities far outpace whatever damage the light is able to inflict. This light, something is coming. Get out of the way at once. Oh, listen, it's singing. This thing actually thinks it's a person. <laughs> wow, Tyron's such a dick. <laughs> Didn't matter how many people I ate. Ooh. I was never satisfied. <laughs> I don't know where the singing lessons came from, but I do know it's sure as hell trying to eat us. All right. What now? Okay. The the hyper beam. Got it. Yeah. This thing has a lot of HP. Okay, there we go. It's just because we were in cutscene. Nobody ever helped me. He's the only one who was ever kind to me. He taught me what kindness is. I will become human. But you can't do it at the, like, cost of everyone else's lives. We'll, we'll speak the same language. We will stay together. You're doing it for him? How sad. How precious. God, Tyrant's such a dick. <laughs> Why you gotta be like this, man? I know you're like a serial killer in real life or something, but God, you're such an asshole. <laughs> oh yeah, you do too now, I forgot. Chance. Attack with all that you have. Already done. <laughs> Did we get it? Uh, 
Things huge. All of this is for him. Oh no. But he's about to come in and give you some bad news. Poor girl. God, this thing has such an awesome design though, I gotta say. I remember seeing this for the first time. Being like, how the hell am I gonna fight this? Attacks, I'm gonna do shit against this thing. Hey, the guy from before has collapsed on the beach. That shade's got some kind of hard on for it. We should take him hostage. Shut your yap. I'm not in the business of using my blade. It's on people. So Tyron's the one that recommended that we take uh, that guy hostage, huh? Makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, those things are scary, actually. Just keep shooting, just keep shooting. And dodging, and dodging! <laughs> uh. Yeah, I forget what actually has to happen, what, what has to trigger. Fine, then. I guess we'll all just sit around a campfire and sing songs until we get murdered. God damn it. Just do it, Kaine. Ow. Guess you just get this strong if you eat, like, a shit ton of humans. This is how you get this strong. Because I'm imagining she probably ate the entire crew, too. And that's probably how she got this wrong. Ow. Hey, over here! This guy's important to you, isn't he? How can it withstand such an onslaught? Yep. I'm, I'm really scared, guys. As you should be. We are fighting a kaiju. Danger if it unleashes that attack. We must stop it. Wonder if it's even possible to stop this. Doesn't seem like it. Because I'm shooting and nothing's happening. It gets to the final one and then it's like, nah. I will become human. You can kind of hear what they're saying a little bit. But it's still like garbled. Be scared. Soon I'll. Soon I'll become human, and then we'll be able to. What 
what you, you can kind of hear it, I guess. I shouldn't you read it. You gotta get yourself killed. Stop! Don't hurt these people. to me this whole time? You... You're a monster! It stopped. Focus on the source of its magic. Aim for the head. Here we go. I'm gonna last your magic power. You can now press L1 to fire Dark Lance. I want to be human. I want us to be together. We can never be together. You disgust me. Yeah, that was about as sad as I expected. Yeah, red eyes again. Is that something from Drakengard? Because that would explain why I didn't... don't understand it. Hmm. Yeah, that was about as sad as I expected. You could kind of see what was going on before Thanks. the dialogue. Thanks. saved our bacon. You've all done so much for me. I don't have the words. We all knew townspeople, but I never imagined I was taking care of- The fault lies with that fu- I... I- Alright, well... There's someone else we need to bring- Fair enough. Oh boy, here she is! Hey! Uh, wait, is he- Come on! Tell her the truth. You're, we tracked him down, but... <laughs> he jumped! No, big idiot! Thinking of oh god. <laughs> Nero was jumping in the cutscene when I was pressing X to skip the dialogue. <laughs> Nero's just hopping up and down. It saddens this old tome to think we'll never hear those two at each other's throats again. If only I'd gotten to him sooner. Damn it. Do not let it burden you so loud. You did the best you were able. Alright. With that, I guess let's go ahead and get out of here. Cause, uh, now we can go check in with, uh, Popola. And, uh, I think she'll tell us to go to Facade now. She'll also give us our fast travel back, which will be very, very nice. And then next time, we'll probably try to do the Cerberus Fragments. And honestly, maybe try to wrap up this playthrough. The hell's this, Sunshine? A letter. That thing wrote it for the postman. Ha! Man, that is some grade A chicken scratch! She probably copied the letters as best she could. So, what's it say?
I think our friend's gonna wake up soon. Let's go. Oh boy. <laughs> That's sad. I wanna- I wanna know what it said. Yeah. When you were threatening that shade on the beach the other day, how did you know it was trying to protect the postman? Just a feeling, I guess. <laughs> Alright. No, she can hear shades because she's part shade. It should make so much sense to you guys that she can understand their language because she's part shade. Come on, put two and two together, near. All right, so yeah, now we just gotta go check in with Popola, and she'll be like, "Ah, oh, you got an invitation to a wedding," and I'll be like, "Yay!" Maybe, uh. Maybe we can save Fira this time. Here's hoping. Alright. Popola, what's up? I'm on my way. I still want to find that magic stone quest, but... I don't know. It, it said after ending B, we get the weapon that we get from that quest for free anyway. So I may just not bother. Like I said, I'm kind of burnt out on the side quests. A lot of them just aren't super interesting and the payoff isn't worth it. Plus I've already got to replay through the game so many times anyway that I'm like... I don't know, I'm getting burnt out. I want to see story stuff. There's just so much content in Nier. And so much of it grindy. Shades on the coast, the ferryman dead, that poor f he loved her still. Have you any- I'm still loyal, sir, but It must be- oh. I will, by the way. Thanks. Oh, since the ferryman was me, I'll make- yeah. Alright, so there's that. Now what do we gotta do? Even we just gotta go check our mailbox. Have lost, the world relentlessly continues to turn. Alright. I think the next playthrough, I won't even have to show anything. I think I'm just gonna play through the game again. On my own time. Um... <laughs> And then I'll just show, like, the, the basically the ending boss fights. That's what most people do, I believe. So. As for blah blah blah. He's getting probably. Let's go. Alright, so there we go. That's what we're gonna do next time. Next time we will go to Facade, see the royal wedding again, and see what, the, what sort of sad backstory uh, the Shade Wolf has. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Near Replicant, and I'll see you next time.